Yeah, I'm live. Awesome. Hey, hello everyone. How are you doing today? Good? Yay! Okay. Hey, it's such an honor as always to be here at uh, Gvox. And uh, this year, I will tell you about VS Code extensions and how you can build them. Okay, so what is a VS Code extension? It's just uh, a way to extend the features, the feature of your IDE. In NTDJ or Eclipse, we call that a plugin. In VS Code, we call that an extension. And actually, um, it's when I joined my new company almost one year ago. We do managed services and the first thing I realized is that we didn't have any plugin for any IDE. Um, and I said, hey, it would be nice if in my VS Code I can uh, scroll through my different managed services. And so I decided to, to dive into how to build a code, VS Code extension. And it was so fun to do that I decided to turn that into a talk, into a turn um, tools in action. Okay? So during the 29 minutes left, expect a lot of live coding and just to give you the big picture on how you can build your own VS Code extension, the philosophy around it, the most important components. And yeah, that's it. And that's my only slide because it's a tools in action. You don't want to see any slides. Uh, and that gives me just the opportunity to introduce myself. My name is Sebastian Blanc. Uh, you can follow me on X or Twitter on CB2706. And I work as a developer advocate for Ivan. That's it for the slides. Okay, let's go uh, in uh, live coding mode. So, first thing I need to do is to scaffold my VS Code extension project, okay? And to do that, I can use a tool that I really like. It's called Ye... I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, Ye -o man, Yo Man, okay? But the, the funny thing is the CLI is called Yo. Yo, okay? I just type Yo. There we go. And he say, hey, do you want to create something for code or for J, J Ipster? J Ipster, really great project, by the way. Nothing to do with your talk, but um, yeah, it's just there. No, I want to do some code stuff. Let's go. So I select code. And here I say, you want to create a new extension? Yes. Um, TypeScript or JavaScript? <laughs> uh, let's go for TypeScript because it's funny. Um, Name of your extension. Let's call it Live TR Devox B. That's way too long, but Live Tools in Action at Devox BE. Uh, identifier can be the same. Uh, an extension live coded during Devox. Okay, that's a great description. Do you want a Git repo? Sure, why not? Do you want Webpack? I don't even know what Webpack is. I'm a Java developer, I remember you. So yeah, no, I don't care. Um, which packet manager? NPM, oh, I know this one. Yarn, I know, it's a cool stuff. PNPM, I've never heard about it. Let's go for NPM. And he has created for me the structure of my project. You can see it here. Um, basically, it's a, it's a NPM project because Keep this in mind, VS Code is based on web technologies. It's all HTML, all JavaScript, okay? That's why you find this kind of uh, structure. And you uh, did a NPM install, which was su surprisingly fast. Um, and it says, do you want to open this project with code? I say, sure, because guess what? To create a VS Code extension, I use VS Code. So that's my project that has been created. I can take a look here at the source, uh, test. Yeah, testing is doubting, so let's not l watch as this. Um, you can see here, extension.ts. That's the most important part here. And you have this function called activate. And this is where, uh, that is the function that will be called once your extension get loaded into your IDE. And to make things nice, they created for me already a command, a hello world command. What is a command? A command is basically when I bring up the palette and all this stuff here that you can see, these are commands, okay? But now I got a hello world command. That's cool. And the other important part is in the package.json. 
Like a regular package.json, you can declare here all your dependencies, etc. But there's this really important part here, contributes. And this is the manifest of our extension. Every command, every new, new view that you will add, you have to declare it here. Okay? So we will be playing a lot with this. But for now, and let me, yeah, this morning he told me, do you want to update your VS Code? I was mm, not so sure just before I talk, so. Yes. And what I can do now is um, run my, my extension because it has already a small command. I start debugging and he should say, hey, it's an extension, I recognize that, so let me load another VS Code with your extension in it, which is super cool. Okay, and here I say, hello world, and if I do hello world, I should have hello world from live devox be. Wow, that's super cool. Okay, um, the great thing is it's in debug mode, so you can do stuff like this. You can put a, a, a breakpoint here, and if I call it again, hello world, it will bring me to the breakpoint and I can debug like uh, anything else. Okay, cool. That's the first part. It's not that interesting. Uh, the first thing that I would like to show you is configuration. Let me drink, because I talk a lot. First thing that you would like to bring into your extension is configuration. You want the user to be able to configure some stuff. Imagine that you uh, write an extension that has to make remote calls and it has to pass an authentication token. So instead of the user every time has to type his token, paste his token, you would like him to have the, the um, possibility to, to put it in uh, a configuration uh, setting, okay? When you go here, uh, settings, okay? So let's do that for this really simple extension and let's say we want to configure the hello. Let me increase it, oh no, that's way too, too big. Uh, imagine we want to um, externalize the hello to a configuration. So we can change that. We can put it in French, in Spanish. I, I, I don't really care. So, but it's just to show you how configuration works. And that gives me the opportunity to show you how we can work with the packet.json and in the contribute part here. Okay, so here I'm in the contribute part of my extension and I say, hey, I want to contribute to configuration, okay? And here I get an array because I have different configuration parts and I will create a new block and uh, I will give it the title, uh, let's say my tools in action config. I'm really bad at naming. And then I need to, to pass some, uh, some properties, okay? And in my properties, I will define one property that I will call my TR greeting, my TR, TR greeting, there we go. Okay, and that's one configuration block. I need to give it a type, okay, let's go for a string. I got completion, as you can see, that's pretty nice. Um, I give it um, probably a description. Description, my greeting, okay. And the other thing that we can pass is a default. It's really important, a default, if there's no configuration passed, you can give it a default. And um, I don't know what I will put there, just because Horacio is here, I will put hola. <laughs> I hope you appreciate this. And um, that's it, I define my configuration block, and now I can go back here to my code and say, hey, instead of saying hello, uh, I can let, we just remove all of this. I can access here VS Code object, and for there, I can access the workspace. From the workspace, I can access the configuration. From my configuration, I can access my key that I have defined here and that I already uh, forgot. Uh, this one, there we go. That should be good. Okay, and then I say plus space. Uh, welcome to, uh, welcome to Devox BE. Okay, let me see, so many columns. I refresh. 
I have an error. Let me show the error. Expected comma. Uh, com co no, no, no. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You will see me forgetting a lot of commas. That's because I'm a groovy developer by heart. Okay, let's go again. We refresh, okay. And um, I say here, I get my config. So if I go to my settings uh, and I search for my TIA, you can see my TIA greetings here. Hola, the default. Okay, if I call it. Oh, yeah, I forgot to remove the breakpoint. Which is sorry about that. Uh, undefined. <laughs> That should not happen. <laughs> Here you should have my... So that is the nice thing about uh, JavaScript. It doesn't break. If I put this, it will still not work. Hello world, undefined to develop. Um, honestly, I repeat this talk every day. Uh, I don't know what I did here. Uh, do, 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 do. You know what? Let me just... No, we don't really care. I probably made a small mistake here. And it's not really that important for the rest of my talk. I probably talked the, the wrong key here, but that is how you can use configuration. Okay? Let's go a bit more serious. Well, a bit more serious, not really. Um, I'm a developer and I focus a lot when I'm coding. And, but at one point, what I like to do is read a good joke. So, it gives me some power and I can code again. Um, and what I like are Chuck Norris's jokes. And I say, hey, that will be awesome if in my IDE I could pop up a Chuck Norris joke. So let's do that together. Really useful feature, believe me. Okay, so um, for that, what do I need to do? First of all, I uh, open just a new terminal and I just add one small library called access. That is really easy for me to make some REST calls, okay? And uh, basically here, what I want to do when the command is called, I want to call my REST service and retrieve a Chuck Norris joke and show it, okay? So I do an access, uh, sorry, I have to import it first, import access from Access, something like that. Yeah, that should be good. Okay. And here I do an access.get. I have to pass the URL to my Chuck Norris joke API. And guess what? It exists. I just put a shortcut here. That's the API to access jokes from Chuck Norris. Okay. And that gives me back a promise. Okay. And this promise gives me an. Uh, response and if I resolve this response in the callback here I can do something like uh, VS code let me just copy that VS code show information message and I s want to show the value the data sorry the data dot value okay and that should do the trick okay that should retrieve for me a Chuck Norris joke, and I should be able to see it. Let me save that, let me change one thing, because now it's not a hello world anymore command, it's a joke command. Okay, let's go, it's joke command. I refresh, let me go here, let me bring up my palette, and I can already see it has changed to joke, which is good news. And now I will call the, the, the API. Spoiler alert, it's will be retrieving a random joke. So at any moment, I could create some uh, shitstorm here. Uh, sorry for that. Should be good. Let's cross fingers. Joke. Whenever Chuck Norris gets déjà vu, people come back to life. OK, not that funny. Let's try another one. Oh, that's already boring even before reading it. Uh, some men have to able to pull a large object like cars or trucks. Okay, funny jokes from Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris jokes are fun, but sometimes I would like to have another type of jokes. And the other type of jokes that I really like are developers' jokes. And what I would like to have is a quick pick that I can choose between Chuck Norris jokes or developers' jokes. Okay, um, <coughs> I can show you what a quick pick is. 
if, for instance, you use the Quarkus extension and that you generate a new project, okay, you, the first thing that you get is a quick pick, quick pick, Maven or Gradle, other kind of jokes, okay? But for this time, let's go for our Chuck Norris or developer jokes. So I go back here to my uh, console, and here when we call the command, what I want to do is say VS Code dot show, sorry, window show quick pick, okay? Show a quick pick. And what does it take as parameter? It takes an array of my different choices. So in my case, it will be a check joke or a death joke, okay? And um, then it takes a placeholder, choose your joke type, something like that, okay? And again, this gives me back a promise, and I resolve that, that gives me a result. Uh, and then I can call my callback here. Let me put the semicolon before I forget. Okay. And <coughs> there we take the result of the quick pick. Okay. If result, result, and yeah, it's so, so fun, JavaScript. Equals, equals, equals. Sorry. Chuck. <laughs> it's always funny. Um, if it's a Chuck joke, okay, then you can go for this part that I coded just before because it's a Chuck joke. Uh, toot, 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 toot. Otherwise, and here because I have two, just two choices, I keep it simple. I do, I just do an if else. Okay, I assume that you want a developer joke. Okay, and in this case, we use access again. We do a get, and we call the dev joke API, and of course. There's a dev joke API available. <laughs> and here I say, let me resolve this. And uh, give me a response. Okay. And toot, toot, toot. Okay. Um, no, not this. Okay. And here I say VS Code window, window show information message. There we go. And I take my result, my response, and uh, this API is a bit different. It, re it gives me back an array, even if there's just one element, but I have to get it, zero. And it always decomposed in one question, okay? A developer uh, joke has one question, and to this question, it has a punchline, okay? So let me retrieve that, response.data. Zero, and here we go for the punch line. Okay, that's pretty it. Uh, what do you want? Semicolon? There you go, you got it. Uh, there we go, and that's it. Now if I refresh and I go back here to my uh, extension uh, and I choose for joke, hey, look at this, I have the choice for check or dev, so let's try a dev joke. Got any funny DNS jokes? Yay, but it may take 24 hours to get it. <laughs> Nobody, sorry. Sorry, uh, it's not me, it's the randomness of the internet. What are cloud made of? Mostly Linux server. Is that the joke? Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh my God. And let's just make sure we have another Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris can stop at red lights. Okay. Cool. <laughs> He's not helping me. I, uh, previous, uh, uh, last time that I did, I, I did this uh, talk, I get this really good joke of why can Java developers not, uh, why, did, why does Java developer wear glasses? Because they don't see sharp. <laughs> I didn't get this one, uh, you know. It's, uh. Anyway, 11 minutes. It's not that bad. Let's do something really, really serious now, okay? So uh, imagine that I work for a company that does manage databases, which is great because I work at Ivan, we do manage data services. And what I would like to have here is a view 
a tree view where I can remotely ask for all my remote services. A bit like if I go here, no, not chat GPT. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. If I go here to my Kubernetes, for instance, and here I get different views where I can go for my mini queue, for my namespaces, okay? But I would like to have the same thing for my remote services. So what I want to do is build my own tree view. Okay, so let's try to do that. And for that, we need to write some code, okay? And for that, I will create a new file and I will call that DB tree uh, provider, okay? It will provide me the data for my database tree. Um, yeah, that's good. Let's just make it uh, because it's nicer. Um, here I can import my <coughs> VS Code. And let's start coding some TypeScript stuff. So funny. Okay, I do export class uh, DB tree provider, okay, provider, and that will implement something that uh, VS Code offer me, which is a tree data provider. Okay, cool. And I can pass a type here, a type, I will pass a type database. Okay, that's it. <coughs> he complains because he doesn't know anything about database. Fair enough, let me create another class called a database. Database. And this class will not implement but extend another class that is uh, given to me for VS Code, which is a tree item. Okay? A tree item is basically what you can see here. Each of these are tree items. And uh, what I will do is make a constructor and I will make a public read only uh, label. A label is really what you can see here. Okay, of the type string, and I will add another thing called a host, okay, because my managed database has a host, and I keep it simple, I just have here the host, but in, in real life you will have the port, the credentials, etc. okay? But I just keep it simple here with just two stuff here, and then I call the super, and I can pass the label, because the super knows about label. Cool. That's cool, that's nice. Uh, he complains because I haven't implemented all the interfaces. So, good news is that I don't need, uh, I don't need those. Cool, uh, I can get three items. This is when you click one of the items, that is what happened. I will implement it in a, a, in a different way, but here I will just return a pro, uh, return promise. Resolve and the element that is passed. Okay, that's cool. Okay, but the, the, the cool one is this one get children. That is really when my extension gets loaded. It has to get the children, and that is where, where you will do your remote call, for instance, to retrieve all your uh, managed services. Again, here we are short in time. And um, imagine that I use access or whatever, but for now, what I will do is I will create a hard-coded list of managed services, and we will just return that. So let me create a constant of DBEs of the type DDB, the database is an array equals, yeah, I'm good here, semicolon, yes, I know. And <coughs> let's go. I got here a label, and I will call that my SQL, sorry between codes, MySQL, and that will have a host. The host is HTTP, blah, 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 blah. Really nice uh, URL, by the way. Uh, and I will just add two other ones. Let me see here. I will add this one and this one. And this one will be called Postgres. And here I will say it's my Postgres URL. And this one will be called Redis, and that will be my fast cache Redis stuff, okay? Uh, what is he complaining about? Yeah, I did something completely wrong here. Do, do, do. Ah. There we go. Yes, okay, so it will just return three products, MySQL, Postgres, Redis. By the way, 
If you need any of those free services for free, my company offer a free tour for a free plan forever on those free services. If you want a real Postgres, Redis, or MySQL, just go to Ivan. I will show you a link. And that is all I have to say to, to, to be corporate. OK, let's go back to the, the extension. So we got our list here. And uh, what I can say here in my uh, Get Children is that I can return my DBEs. Cool. What else do I need to do? Well, I need to go here to my package JSON. And what I would like to do is to add this tree view here in this explorer part, OK? Um, so <coughs> what I need to do is go to package, to my uh, contribute here, and say, hey, you know what? I would like to contribute to the views. To which view do you want to contribute? Well, I want to contribute to the explorer view, OK? And uh, what do you want to put there? Well, uh, I want to have something with an ID called DB, DB, database list. OK. And uh, it will have um, a title. No? A description? No? What, what does it have? A name. A name. A name. My uh, DB list. OK. And that's cool. OK. And then the. the the only other thing that I have to do is go here to my extension.ds here. Let's go here. In my, I'm already still in my activate stuff. And I say here, uh, const db tree data. And I say, hey, I want, uh, my, uh, I want to create uh, a new, to, 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 sorry, uh, I'm lost. Three minutes left. Wow, that's that's not cool. <laughs> uh, VS Code, create. Uh, sorry, window. Window, create. Uh, create a tree view. Okay, create a tree view. Uh, tut, 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 tut. Yeah, I know how. It, yeah, yeah, that's how it goes. Uh, create a data tree. Yeah, that's all cool. Sorry. Uh, create a tree view with. The ID DB list. Okay. And uh, all I have to provide here is a tree data provider. And that's the class that I just created. So I can say here new uh, DB tree provider. Okay. There we go. Semicolon. Cool. If I refresh and I come back here, hey, look at this. I got here my DB list and with MySQL, Postgres, Redis. Cool, but not that really exciting because nothing happens when I click on it and I have two minutes to create a view. <laughs> that will be really funny. Um, but let's try it. But before that, I would like to move this part here, my DB list. I would like to have it its own view because I will have more windows. So I want a new view container. Good news is, and I will probably only show you that and not the details because I will run out of time, is that I can do that easily here by saying, hey, I would like this time to contribute to the view containers and say, okay, to the panel, which is uh, this part, or the activity bar, which is this one. I say, I want to contribute to the activity bar and I create a new view with the ID, uh, my uh, DB view, and with uh, an icon, because I need an icon. So you can package your own icon, of course, if you want. But the nice thing with uh, VS Code, it comes with a pre-packaged set of icons. And there's one called server, which is exactly what I need, OK? So that should be good, OK? And um, the other thing that I need to do is say, in my view, instead of contributing to Explorer, I want to contribute my DB list with this new view that I created. OK, so if I refresh here, I come back, I come, if I refresh here, and I come back, <laughs> it should come on. If I refresh here, my DB view, activity bar, my DB view, uh, my DB view, toot, 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 one minute left. Uh, it, should, it should appear here, OK? Uh, you can't, oh, I got an error. 
Uh, never happened. Uh, my DB view does not exist. My DB view does not exist. Come on. <laughs> it exists here. Uh, I've created here. Okay. Okay. It doesn't exist. You know what? That's the moment where I pull up my, 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 um, <laughs> I never did that before in my life. I cannot even use my Mac. Um, to, 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 to my really cool extension. Let's go. Let's start it. Uh, go run. It's exactly the same. Right? It's just the finished version. Start debugging. Okay, there we go. Okay. Um, <coughs> oh, because it's too small. Look at there. So imagine it worked. Huh? I was not stressed out. My time is up. But look, I got my view here. Woo! And you, you missed some really exciting part where I, um, and I just have to show you that, uh, to, 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 to live uh, DB test, where I'm live coding HTML, but basically when I click here, I get the details of my host. Um, and can I show you that to you? Uh, whoop, whoop. I got so many, so many windows, so many stuff happening here. Uh, live, there it is. Okay, I just want to show you that because it is really fun. I'm, I'm so, I'm s disappointed that I could not live code this live, but basically I created a view and because it's all HTML, look, I was about to live code some HTML inside of a string. I'm out of time. The screen is even black there. Um, that was it for me. I hope it gave you some interesting stuff. And this is just promo. If you want to have some extra $100 on the Ivan account, you can just uh, click that. Uh, my, my boss will be happy. But anyway, um, 30 minutes is short, but I showed you some important stuff. Configuration, tree view. I was about to show you uh, how to create your own view. I was running out of time. Um, but really give it a go. Great thing is documentation is awesome from uh, Microsoft for Visual Studio Code. If you go to code.visual.code slash API, you have a lot of documentation for every component that I show you. You have explanation, a separate repo that shows you how it works. So I really recommend you to, to watch this. And that's it. It's Monday. Uh, DevOps is just starting. And I wish you an awesome DevOps to everyone. Thank you so much.